Okay, so uh, I've completed the installation of the uh, RC Lander all metal 100 degree retract on one side of my Hellcat here. You can see there it is there. And uh, uh, not, not a drop in install, but not that tough either. Anyway, so I'm going to uh, now install the other side. And uh, I'm going to take a slightly different approach on the other side to the mounting. On the first side, I actually made an adapter plate out of the mounting plate from the stock retract unit. And on this side, I'm going to go a little different route and see which, uh, which method works better. So in any case, the first thing to do is to remove the, uh, the stock unit. And we'll do that first. And we'll get moving. Okay, so I've unplugged the uh, the retract uh, lead from the uh, receiver, and I've plugged in a long servo extension uh, for two reasons. One, the uh, uh, the lead on the uh, RC Lander is a fair bit shorter. A bit shorter than the stock one, and also uh, uh, this long uh, extension will make it much easier to feed the lead back through the wing without taking anything apart. So we'll do that next. I've removed the uh, the doors, uh, and next I'll remove the four uh, mounting screws. Okay, so I've removed the stock unit, and you can see the uh, servo extension that I pulled back with the uh, the retract ex extension. So that when we go to put the new one in, we just plug it in and gently work it back in there, and make it easier to get the wire through into the cut into the fuselage. Uh, so on this one, my plan is to make a couple of mounting rails uh, out of. Got a quarter inch plywood here uh, and uh, cut away the, the foam in between the stock pegs and epoxy them in there and screw directly to those rails. And I think that'll work, but well, let's see what happens. Okay, so uh, using an X Acto knife, I've cut away the foam in between the mounting posts there, all the way down to the plastic uh, that's on the other side of the wing. So we get the uh, the most strength out of it, and now I'm going to measure and cut some uh, mounting rails out of my quarter inch plywood, and we'll epoxy them in there. Okay, so I've cut the first mounting rail that I'm going to epoxy in place. Uh, made some measurements with my calipers, cut it a little big, sanded it to fit well. Uh, I came up with uh, 28.3 millimeters uh, between the posts, 26.4 millimeters uh, at the leading edge, and 35.5 millimeters at the trailing uh, towards the trailing edge. Uh, and I should point out that your your uh, dimensions will probably be a little different, as I previously removed about an eighth of an inch here from the two front pegs to give a little bit more forward rake on the gear. So uh, I suggest you make your own measurements, but it took me about five minutes to make that. Now I'm going to make another one. Okay, I got both my mounting rails cut and ready to epoxy in place. I'm going to use some uh, heavy bodied uh, epoxy gel and uh, we'll mix, mix it up and glue them in place. Okay, so uh, I now have epoxied my uh, mounting rails in place. Pretty simple. Uh, one thing I did want to point out is that uh, when you epoxy these in, definitely want to make sure that you uh, uh, clean any excess epoxy out of this, out of these outside corners, so that the uh, the retract unit sits in there nice and flush on the, the rails. Uh, pretty easy uh, uh, way of going about this. Definitely easier than the way I did the first one, and. Uh, uh, about 30 minutes all told here so far, uh, so not too big of a deal. Uh, 
uh, you can see that it uh, it sits in there really nicely and a couple things here uh, if you're doing this uh, if you're doing this yourself you could opt to uh, mount this in mount this retract in here so that the front the front holes line up with the stock uh, mounting pegs and then uh, then we'll put a, a screw in here uh, this side over here is a, a little difficult to put a screw in because of this uh, this screw that has the the linkage that rotates it uh, so anyway uh, because I've already done mine on the other side I'm going to mount it so that it's right in between evenly spaced between the stock screw, screw holes uh, and I'm going to take my Dremel tool and drill a couple of small pilot holes and screw it in with the uh, with the stock screws uh, but for now I'm gonna let let this uh, epoxy set up a bit more before we do that also when we go to mount it I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to uh, make a little recess for this little screw head right here uh, so that it sits flush on, on the uh, on the rail here. Uh, I'll, I'll just drill a st small hole there t uh, for a recess for that. Anyway, so while this sets up more before I mount it in place, we'll start uh, we'll start the scary part, which is uh, extending these uh, oleos out so they're long enough for the the Hellcat. Uh, and this should not be an issue on the Corsair. Because the Corsair struts are oh, are just a tad longer than these, so those will be easy to adjust. For, on these, we need to extend them out a fair amount. Uh, you can see I've I used an adapter and I fine tuned it with a couple of washers on the other side here, right there. Anyway, uh, so we're going to take this thing apart. Uh, there's there's a couple of different options. Uh, uh, a guy could come up with an, a piece of aluminum, center drill it for the three millimeter uh, string that's in there, and drill it for a couple of set screws, and then use a three millimeter motor shaft. So, they have a have a, a a piece of aluminum here that comes out, and then another another piece of three millimeter rod that ties the ties the pieces together. Uh, for me. I'm gonna go a different route. I'm gonna take this thing apart, drill all of this out for four millimeters uh, because I think that because it's stronger, and uh, I happen to have some four millimeter piano wire that works pretty well. Uh, the good news is that uh, uh, these these units are much simpler to take apart than the stock units, uh, so it's really easy and, and show you how to do it. Okay, so uh, on the Hellcat, we need to extend the oleos because they're just too short. Uh, I've already removed the uh, the two grub screws here, removed the oleo, and uh, now we're going to take this thing apart to replace the strut pin here. Uh, uh, it's a three millimeter pin, and uh, because I happen to have a uh, four millimeter rod, uh, I'd hoped that I had a, uh, a, f a three millimeter motor shaft that was long enough, but uh, we need to need to extend it fairly long, and I didn't have a motor shaft that long, nor could I find one in a quick search on the internet that was long enough. Uh, I determined to, uh, that it needed to be about uh, 68 millimeters long. So, um, uh, I'm gonna make my own shaft to go in there, and the first thing we're gonna do is uh, disassemble this. And uh, I know for a lot of people this is a scary kind of thing, but these are actually much easier than the stock units to uh, disassemble. Um, so uh, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, I'm going to loosen the two grub screws here on the uh, the little rotating collar, okay? And these are these are um, Loctited in. So if they're too tight, heat them up a little bit with a soldering iron tip, or since this is all metal, you can hit them with a little micro torch real quick. 
but uh, as you can see, these came off uh, easy. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the uh, the three screws here on the side plate, uh, opposite the the side that has the the little uh, rotating linkage, and I suggest that you have a little tray to put these little tiny screws in so you don't lose them. I always do that. And then I spend a half an hour on the floor of my shop on my knees looking for them. So anyway, I'm remo I've removed the three screws and then I'm just going to use a, a regular flat screwdriver and I'm going to go in here where, where you can get in there a little bit and loosen that up and take it off. Okay, simple. Now I'm going to turn it over. Ah. That's the one thing you got to watch for. This little pin, it goes right here in this corner. Don't lose it. Okay. So, I'm going to take that out. <clears throat> now, I'm going to take the other three screws out here. Okay, and again, I'll use use my little flathead screwdriver here. Work it in there, work it loose, slowly, nice and easy, and then boom, here we go. All of the the circuit board, the the motor, the wiring, all that is all all of that is right there, uh, self-contained. And when, I'm just going to put this aside because we don't need that. Okay, so uh, I've got the side plate here. I'm going to slide off the little rotating thing. Now I have the trunnion with the strut pin. Okay, and in this case, the stock strut pin has a little shoulder on it, uh, as opposed to a, a, a little uh, a little circlip. Uh, and I'm actually going to use this to uh as my axle for my uh for the, for the rubber tires that i'm using i actually am uh, using uh hobby king uh uh i believe they're 70 millimeter uh soft rubber tires with uh with a split rim they're really nice uh and i just happen to have a, a an extra pair of them laying around and they take a three millimeter axle so I'm going to use that. Uh, if you want to use the 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 uh, stock tires, okay, uh, you can you can uh, use a piece of the original strut, or a piece, if you're if you're doing what I'm doing, you can use a piece of this four millimeter piano wire uh, to make your axle out of, and uh, we'll we'll deal with that in a minute. Um, That'll entail, either way, it'll entail drilling out this axle hole. Uh, the nice thing is that there's a fair amount of meat here. There's also two uh, grub screws here on the oleo. Okay. Uh, so, anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill out the hole in the trunnion and also, where did you go? The, the little rotating. Uh, lever to four millimeters. Uh, if you got a drill press or a lathe, this is super easy. Uh, I have neither, so I'm going to drill them out using a, my my uh, handheld electric drill, uh, and uh, to to ensure that I that I drill them straight and centered. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with uh, I'm going to start with uh, the next size up from uh, three millimeters. Or in in this case, uh, uh, English. I'm, I'll be using a, a set of number drills, <clears throat> and uh, I'll drill the, drill both of these out uh, uh, a couple steps at a time, just to ensure that I stay straight and in line with the center. And uh, it's no big deal. It takes a, takes a few minutes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of my four millimeter piano wire 
and there's two options here one is you could use a razor saw and cut a slot and put a, uh, a circlip on it but I'm actually going to uh, use use a torch and heat it up and forge a little uh, a little knob on the end like the stock one has and then uh, uh, clean it up with a file so that it rotates nice and uh, and, and like that. So there are other there, there are options here. This is just uh, what I'm, I'm going this route because uh, I have this I have this the stuff in, uh, on hand and it's relatively easy for me to do. Okay, so uh, the next thing we'll do is drill these out. Uh, then we'll uh, we'll forge our little end on here. Uh, I don't have a circlip that'll fit this, uh, otherwise I might go that route, but uh, you can do that if you like. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll be right back.